NFL game day pick him back again. Cynthia Freeland, in case you missed it, on fire last week. A ridiculous 13-2 and 1 with her pick. So let's just go ahead and run it back. Eagles, Bucks, who do you have? After running 10,000 simulations of every single game, my model says advantage Eagles defense. I say they leave Tampa as 26-21 winners. This is going to be a good one, man. A rematch of the AFC title game. Pats favored by one. But we don't know if Leonard Fournette is going to be on the field. He's a game-time decision. What does that mean for the Jags, LT? Well, I told you, LT, uh, yeah, I'm TD My here. apologies. <laughs> Two Hall of Fame running backs. <laughs> but it, what, it, what it means is that their offense is going to be less predictable with Leonard Fournette not in the game. So, therefore, some people would, would suggest that they're better when T.J. Yellen is in the game. Some Are you one of them? That. I am not, but I think they'll be fine with him. All right, Cynthia, we have heard about this Gronk and Jalen Ramsey back and forth for the last few weeks now. How much is this uh, going to impact the game, this matchup between the two of them? Well, shameless plug, I wrote a big article on it, so you should go to NFL.com and see it because it's a <laughs> lot of computer vision in that one. But for me, I don't think that this actually matters because the shortcut here is that when Ramsey's on Gronk, it's not Br- Brady's first option there. I think Gronk sees the end zone. Ooh. All right. All right, let's uh, first game out of the gates. We're picking them. I'm going Patriots. Nobody game plans better than Bill Belichick. Gronk is going to be a decoy in this one. Somebody else will step up. I'm going Jags. They were 3-0 and without Fournette last year. TJ Yeldon is a viable backup running back. I'm with you. I'm that. going Duval in this one, man, because their defensive line is pretty good. You got Campbell, Jackson, and Dockway. They've got a very good pretty front good. there. Oh, so yeah. I think they'll get good. to Tom Brady a few times. So my mom actually has 24 23 Jags and I think the underrated part here is their O-line Cam Robinson zero pressures allowed last game all right we want to know what you think who wins Pats or Jags be sure to vote at NFL game day on Twitter results coming up in just a bit I'm voting Jags already guys Uh, let's go to the (laughs) NFC North shall we where the two division favorites face off in this one the Vikings swept the Packers in 2017 winning 23-10 week six they were 16-0 in week 16 still a lot of questions about Aaron Rodgers that knee heading into Sunday this one in Green Bay TD if Rodgers plays at less than 100 percent what will that mean for the Vikings defense? Well, they should have played them like the Bears should have did last week, and they should have just came up on coverage. Aaron Rodgers is only going to jump back and throw the ball in like three seconds, two seconds actually. So they're going to suffocate that deep, that Ooh. offense and make them throw the ball quick. All right, so if the Vikings defense limits Rodgers, what does that mean for the offense? So the offense is going to need to get that run game going. My model says if they can get Dalvin Cook going, maybe short passes, maybe on the ground, that will be the key. And part of the reason, keeping Aaron Rodgers off the the field. Mm-hmm. Huge deal. I need a projection for this one, Cynthia. Vikings 24, 23. I like it. Oh, All right. Close ones. And it's close there. Close ones. TD? I'm going Vikings here in this win because I think their defense is going to step up and take away that short game from Aaron Rodgers. Maybe pick them off once or twice. I might be the Ooh. only person saying the Packers, but with a knee, without a knee, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, when number 12 is on the field, you got to watch man. out for him. How does this Packers defense slow down the Vikings offense? <laughs> they don't. We're going Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, I like All it. right. Uh, I can't wait for that game either. Another divisional matchup on Sunday in the NFC South. It's the Panthers and the Falcons. They split last season. Panthers winning at home week nine. Then in week 17, it was the Falcons' turn behind five Matt Bryant mm. field goals, a win that secured a playoff berth. And just like that one, this one is right back in Atlanta. Falcons favored by six. Devontae Freeman hasn't practiced all week. And according to our Tiffany Blackman, will not be playing on Sunday. How does that change things for the Falcons offense? Well, their offense has struggled recently, so it doesn't change it that much. Seven Coleman filled in last year for Freeman, played well, had three touchdowns, 155 total yards. But, again, their offense is struggling, so not that much. Mm -hmm. How about the defense, uh, Cynthia? Keanu Neal, Deion Jones put on IR. How do you see Cam taking advantage of that? Well, North Turner is going to scheme to get Cam Newton going with the RPOs. That's what he always does. In fact, in this matchup, he averages over 10 more rushing yards per game than everyone else in the league combined. For me, that's a big difference maker in terms of how they're going to score points. But we'll see what happens with the score. We'll see. Panthers we'll see. have lost three in a row in Atlanta, which is Cam Newton's hometown. His offensive line is banged up. I am going Falcons in this one. 
I am going Panthers because of a guy by the name of Steve Sarkeesian. The Falcons what? were one in five so in the red against zone. Him. Yes. Well, Got of course, it. Steve Sarkeesian calling the offense. They've had red zone struggles as of late. I think it's going to continue without Devontae Freeman. So I am going I'm, Panthers. I'm going with the Carolina Panthers here because Atlanta, they're missing two key players, Keanu Neal and Deion Jones, and they're on their defense. So can't win without those two guys. So my model says Falcons 24, Panthers 20. You know why? Wow. Tack, McKinley, Vic, Beasley. No O-line. Those are two great pass rushers for the Falcons. The O-line's been struggling mightily. And then you got Christian McCaffrey, but what about Greg Olson? You're going to need someone. Need no, a that's, safety that, that's a good point. Second yeah. year for Tack McKinley. Uh, speaking of Carolina, we're thinking about everybody uh, there and on the East Coast affected by Hurricane Florence. You can help them out by texting Florence to 90999 to donate $10 to the American Red Cross Hurricane Florence Relief Fund. Okay, Dan, uh, more game picks in just a bit, but let's talk individual performances in a segment we like to call more or less. Drew Brees going up against the Browns defense, more or less than two touchdowns. Uh, more in this, this one. Drew so Brees. Easy. More, I mean, get that's that three last week. Four, I'm, giving, I'm going to record four touchdowns with Drew four Brees. Four touchdowns. Ooh, okay. There you go. Cynthia. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to go as rich as four, but I'm going to say it's more than two touchdowns, primarily because, well, first, it's going to be a get right game. And second, that's we right. saw Miles Garrett move around on that D-line, meaning they're like matchup against guards, they're matching all these different places. Short passes, Alvin Kamara, three touchdowns. Oh, wow. Oh, VFL, that's oh, just a ball for life, Alvin Kamara. All right, Monday night, Cleo Mack can have more or less than two sacks against the Seahawks, TD. Ooh. I'm going less here, and the reason is, you know, he was an impactful player week one. They got, they got to watch him this week. They're not going to let him just run a while. So I'll say less than two sacks this week for him. You know who they didn't watch last week? Vaughn yeah. Miller. True. Yep. The Seahawks wow. O-line allowed Vaughn Miller to sack Russell Wilson three times. I go Khalil Mack, four sacks. Because you know what? He got Whoa. paid more than Vaughn Miller. He's got he's to live with his paycheck. Yeah. Four. You heard me. Did you not see what happened last week to Russell Wilson? It was a sack party. Uh, finally, Saquon Barkley will score more or less than one touchdown against the Cowboys. TD, take it up. I'm going more than one. He's got a better supporting cast here, so they have to focus on more than just Saquon yep. here. Give me two touchdowns for Saquon Barkley. Well, listen, you don't go against a Hall of Fame running back like LT. Just kidding. Hey. I'm going to <laughs> GD. Hey. Saquon Barkley, two touchdowns in this one for me as well. One on the ground, one in the air. It was a huge win for the Jets Monday, and now they face the Dolphins at home. TD, the Jets scored 48 points. Can they do that against Miami? They cannot do that again. That is a historical amount of points there. Everything bounced their way. They had five turnovers in this game. I don't see the same thing happening this week against the Tennis, I mean, against uh, Dolphins. the Dolphins. Yeah. Uh, the Dolphins also don't have their guard, Josh Sitton. They just signed him in the offseason. Cynthia, I'm sending this to you. How does that impact the Dolphins' offense? With Josh Sitton playing, they were actually the winner in my model. But without Josh Sitton, Adam Gase will not be able to do all of those run concepts that he likes to navigate, meaning third down percentage could be a problem. That's a big game shifter for me. So the Jets favored by three with that rookie quarterback coming off a fantastic debut. Sounds like you, uh, I, I kind of know what you're thinking in this. Yeah, one. I kind of gave it away. All right. So I have 22 for the Jets, 21 for the Dolphins, meaning the home team wins this one. All right, another close game. I like the Dolphins in this one. Kind of agreeing with TD. I just don't see the Jets being able to do it again. I'm not trusting a rookie quarterback in Sam Darnold just yet. TD? Wow. Okay. okay. I like the Jets in this one. And listen, they're not going to get five turnovers, but they'll get three against Ryan Tannehill. They'll beat the Miami Dolphins. So give me the Jets in this one. Give me the Jets as well, TD. I like what I saw from that defensive line. And Ryan Tannehill and his surgically repaired knee are going to be in trouble without the guard. I am taking the Jets. It is time now, though, for On the Hook Presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. TD, who is on the hook to get an upset win this week? On the hook. Go to Tampa uh -oh. Bay Buccaneers. What? On the hook for upset win. Listen, Ryan Fitzpatrick fits magic, as you said. 3-1 and one as a starter since 2017. And they have momentum and confidence. And those two big factors in this league are huge. Give me those bucks. Wow, that is a hot take, that's for sure. Patrick Mahomes also had himself a stellar week one performance winning AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Sunday, he is sitting down for a one-on-one -on -one with our guys on NFL Game Day morning. Start your Sunday, people at home, with Rich and the Gang at 9 a.m. Eastern. It is only on NFL Network. Dan? Very much looking forward to that, but not as much as I'm looking forward to this. Quick picks with Cynthia right now. Texans, Titans, Texans, 
favored by three. What do you have? So I have the Texans coming out on top, 23-21. Mm. Tennessee, injuries to the O-line, tight end position, and quarterback, which is ultimately the most important one. That shifts my model completely. Yeah, Mike Vrabel says we're going to see both Blaine Gabbert and Marcus Mariota. Raiders, Broncos, Broncos favored by six. I have the Broncos taking this one 24-21. I think the Raiders, they, we saw the start of something on their defense with some, we didn't expect them to come out as strong as they did in that first half. I think they have a plan for that Broncos offense. Oh, I can't wait to see that game. I love the Broncos in this one. All right, Seahawks, Bears, Bears favored by three. Okay, so 24-21 in favor of the Bears. I think this is more points than you might expect in this matchup, but I think the defenses here make a huge difference, and it's really that Bears defense that drives the win. I like the way you think here. Let's check out a couple more of your uh, Week 2 projections. Browns at the Saints. Saints win by 10. So the Brownies going to be, uh, what, 0-1-1. and 49ers win 24-21 over the Lions. And then you have the Rams easily taking care of business against the Cardinals. All right, you want more projections? Dave Damashek guarantees that you will love these guarantees, starting with Captain Kirk and A-Rod. Here is Shaq with 60 seconds. Hey, Damashek here. Big NFC matchup in Lambeau featuring two especially affluent QBs named Rodgers and Cousins. Those two QBs will combine to throw at least four interceptions. Yikes. Rodgers throws, and that's going to be picked off. With Levy and Bell watching from home, presumably through his monocle, James Conner will again find the end zone for the Steelers, who are hosting Patrick Mahomes, who for his part will throw at least two touchdowns. Mahomes play fake. Sets a pass. Caught by Tyreek Hill. He's in to jet propulsion. 10-5. Bruce Arians will not swear during the Week 2 broadcast. And the Chargers are headed to the other end of Football America to play the Bills in Buffalo. And while I don't expect Old Man Rivers to pull a Flacco and win by 34, I do think Keenan Allen goes over 100 yards receiving and a double-digit Bolts win. Y'all know he's the video game king. And speaking of high-end receivers, Odell Beckham's going to make a splash in Big D. I'm a rock star. They don't like when you clown on them, no. Oh, don't do it. Grabbing two touchdowns in the Jaredome to lead the Gents to a narrow Sunday night victory, and I will talk to you next week. Talking running backs again, Giants, Cowboys in Dallas. Cowboys favored by three. Bigger impact, a couple of young studs, Zeke or Saquon? I'm going with Zeke in this one because he just has more around him in, uh, in this game. And you know what they're going to do to Zeke. They're going to pack that box and make uh, Dak have to throw the ball. So Zeke has more weapons. So give me, I mean, give me, uh, give me Saquon Barkley in this one. All right, so you're going Saquon. Yes. Sa- Saquon had that big 68-yard run last week. Outside of that run, 16 carries yeah. for 38 yards. Just saying. Just saying. I know. Um, Don't so. Cynthia, how about that Giants O-line holding up against that Cowboys pass rush? What do you think? Well, when you look into uh, when you're playing the Jags, yeah. your O-line's going to look pretty hard, Not terrible. Good. <laughs> Not going to be a good pick anyways. And they really have pressure coming from one side on that's what they that's where they saw pressure Mm -hmm. so this week they've got pressure coming from one side with demarcus lawrence and that's going to make a big difference here shifts my model okay time here so give us the pick who do you have in this one cynthia i have the giants coming out on top 24 21 you know the only team to have a worse record at home than away over the past decade cowboys All right. I like it. I'm going the Giants because you saw what Carolina did. They stacked the box against Zeke. He did not have a productive day. 69 yards. It's not going to get you the W. TD, you kind of said the same thing, right? Aaron, I agree with you on this one. Give me the G-man, the divisional foe here. But you know what? This is all about the Cowboys offense. It's horrible right now. So the Giants take care of business. Yeah, let's make it a clean sweep, man. The uh, Cowboys look like a six-win team last week until they show me something. I'm really not picking them to win a game of rock, paper, scissors. And I'm just saying. (laughs) Time now for pick six. That's right. Cynthia went six for six last week. Let's find out just how confident she is in some of her decisions in a segment we like to call pick Pick six. Six. Get it? We're going to dole out point six being your most confident, one being your least. Let's start with Chiefs at Steelers. Okay, so injury report for a quarterback is always going to make things uncertain. 51% here. Steelers, not certain at all. Okay, yep. Ben's got a bum elbow. How about here? Panthers at Falcons. This is here. I mean, what do you think with this one? I think this one will surprise people that it's yeah. so high. 61.4%. That's pretty big in my model. That's good for number four. All right. I dig it. Uh, how about here? Colts taking on the Redskins. Adrian Peterson. What? Yeah, exactly. So you talked about it. The O-line drives a rating of this one. The second most confident pick in my model of these six. Okay. How about this one? The Vikings taking on maybe Aaron Rodgers. We don't know if he is going to play. 
So the Vikings defense seals the deal for this one in me. But it's always Aaron Rodgers, and that quarterback is a big difference maker. It's the second, so no, second yeah. least confident. And he's pretty good at home. Uh, the Very Eagles good at home, especially. Taking on Ryan Fitzmagic. Uh, what do you have in this one? Yeah, so this one, sorry, Tampa Bay. You can come hate me some more this week. I'm picking the Eagles. 57% of the model. That's good for number three. No Brent Grimes, no Vernon Hargraves in the secondary. Chargers taking on Josh Allen and the field. So I don't think this part's the surprise, and I don't think this part's the surprise. But the reason is because Phillip Rivers, those wide receivers are going to catch the balls. They can't keep dropping them. Chargers. Yeah, Josh Allen, sorry about it. The rookie is not going to face Joey Bosa, but you have the most confident pick, the six, uh, with the Bills losing. Uh, the Steelers, because we're not really sure about Big Ben, so you, that is your least confident pick, but you did go six for six. Uh, and the star's here again, so the luck is back, you know? That's the lock of the week, though, this this one right here? The yeah, Chargers. you got to start. That's how you make the six come true is if you put the star there, so we It's did good luck. Lock of the week. That's right. Uh, TD, what is your lock of the week? My lock of the week is going to be the New Orleans Saints. They're licking their wounds right now. They've got to get right. Team coming in with the Cleveland Browns, Drew Brees. They're not going to lose back-to-back games at home. It's not going to happen. So give me the New Orleans Saints. All right, a little recap of some of our picks today. There are no unanimous decisions on this page, but a lot of people like the Texans, the Jets, and the Vikings. Just in case you were wondering, Cynthia Freeland went 12-2-1 last week. TD 10-4-1. and Uh, Aaron and I bringing up the rear. But uh, we were both 500 or over. Yes. Okay? And now we have our clean sweeps. Uh, Broncos, Giants, and Bears. You can pick them with confidence. Dan, it is time to get to our survivor pool picks in advance. Last week, it was great for the ladies, not so much for the dudes. Uh, <laughs> myself and Cynthia 1-0 after taking the Ravens. Dan, you had the Saints. TD, you had the Lions. Don't Both of them me. took home an L. What do you guys have Don't this week, Dan? We'll let you play anyways, even though you weren't really Thank supposed you. to. Thank you. But... Let's just pretend it's uh, a second chance pool that we have here. I- I'm going to go with the Chargers. Uh, a lot of confidence in my hometown Los Angeles team now. That they're going to roll. Uh, the Actually, the Cardinals were 1-8 and eight on third down conversions, and that was against a Redskins defense. They're playing the Rams. I'm picking the Rams, guys. Cynthia. Well, well I'm picking the Redskins this okay. week. I love O-lines. I will always pick good O-lines all day Redskins for me.